today our objectives I'll go through is to provide an understanding of the wind and earthquake force requirements for precast pre-stressed concrete parking garages. I'm going to spend some time talking about the evolution of seismic design for precast concrete and the development of the earthquake code provisions that affect precast concrete. Um, I want to do that in the context of the historic development because I think that there's a lot of confusion that I find in talking with other design professionals about what is the meaning of some of the requirements and where did it come from and why are we doing this. Um, so I think the best way to do that is from a historic perspective to see how did we get to where we are today and maybe that will help us understand what some of the requirements really mean. I'm going to talk some about wind loading for parking structures and some peculiarities that, that do occur that are perhaps um, different for parking garages and then we're going to talk about earthquake loading. Um, in the second section, I'm going to spend time talking about the use of shear walls, which is the most prominent system used in precast concrete uh, in parking structures. We'll talk about configurations, um, a simplified stiffness analysis for load distribution, um, importance of resistance to overturning, and uh, some discussion about wall openings and wall piers. We will try to provide an understanding for the use of shear walls in the system design, discussing wall and diaphragm as a balance in the design, um, some alternate, uh, the consideration of the alternate approximate period calculations that are permitted in the load standard, um, talking about wall structural modeling considerations for your system analysis, and then some of the conditions related to special structural walls for precast concrete that are used in, in uh, high seismic regions. I'm going to wrap up talking about the use of moment resisting frames and diaphragm. We're going to talk about ordinary moment frame issues, about special moment frame, uh, moment resisting frames or SMURFs with uh, precast concrete and uh, diaphragm issues will be the last part of the presentation. So let me set the stage or the context of where we are today in the design of precast parking garages and the general layout and characteristics. Um, they are generally simply simple span, uh, framed with simple span, 12 foot wide or wider double T's. Um, we have seen 13 foot 4, we've seen 15 feet, and we've even seen 16 foot wide double T's. Before framing with the especially wide members, some caution is required because shipping widths or permit widths are usually the constraint, and the wider T's are usually involved with proprietary or patented systems for shipping so that uh, use of T's wider than 12 feet. Um, should be considered in a discussion with the regional precasters and their ability to provide competitive bidding. A simple span, inverted T-beams and spandrel beams, again, most of the things that we have are pinned connections. Our typical bays range from 36 to 48 feet um, with 60 foot long spans of the double T's, plus or minus two, or two to four feet in some instances, depending on the specific requirements. Parking garages almost always involve ramp framing for vertical movement of the automobiles, and it certainly affects consideration of the framing and the behavior of the structure. Sometimes a garage may build, be built into a hillside where the ramping is actually done on grade outside of the garage, but that really is the exception and not the rule. And uh, usually, parking garage design is governed by some level of seismic design. This, is, this was not always true, um, and that's again something that I want to discuss in terms of talking about the evolution of the building code requirements. Early seismic requirements in the building codes came from SEOC, the Structural Engineers Association of California, from their Blue Book recommendations that were adopted into the Uniform Building Code. 
some of these ultimately were adopted by the Boca Code on the East Coast and the Southern Building Code, or SBC, through um, reference to ANSI A58.1. Um, the East Coast codes, however, usually allowed very generous exceptions to seismic design so that it was considered something that someone else did in most areas east of the Mississippi. 